Hi everyone, Pastor Jeff here with you again on yet another weekly video during this coronavirus time. I want to begin uh, our few minutes today by reading a passage of scripture. It's, it, it may very well be familiar to you. It's in Mark chapter 4, the very end of the chapter. And Jesus, at the end of a very long day, uh, told his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. And leaving the crowd, the Bible says, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they, that's the disciples, they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid. And said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? What a tremendous story. And uh, I, I, uh, I saw something today that um, one of my daughters, uh, Tiffany, shared with me. And it comes from the uh, president of Walk Through the Bible, which is based over in Atlanta. It's a parachurch organization. And um, Mr. Tuttle was remarking on that story and made four, uh, just brought out four highlights, if you will. And I just want to share them with you very, very quickly. Number one, Jesus is not surprised by the storm. So let's just apply all of this to what we're going through right now. When Jesus went out and got in that boat and laid down to go to sleep, because he is God and knows everything, he is omniscient, he knew that a storm was going to rise up. He knew it was going to be a rough storm. He knew the disciples were going to be scared for their own lives. And he lay down on a cushion and went to sleep. The storms that you and I come up against Never surprise Jesus. Another thing is that as we consider the storm and we consider uh, Jesus, we know this, that he is our peace in the storm. We look to him. And they did. I mean, great. give them some credit. Uh, you and I probably would have been doing the same thing these disciples were doing. We would have been frightened to death. I mean, just compare your actions and reactions right now and over these last six or seven weeks, compare your actions and reactions to the ones of the disciples. Have you said to him yet, Lord, do you not care that we are perishing here? Are you not aware? Uh, where, where are you? Why, why isn't this bothering you? Why aren't you concerned about any of this? And if we find ourselves saying those kinds of things, we find ourselves no pun intended, in the same boat as the disciples. They were scared for their lives. They were frightened. They didn't know what the immediate future was going to hold. Hey, sounds just like some people we know, right? Us. But Christ is our peace in the storm. They turned to him, and he saved them. Good thing for us to keep uh, in mind. Another point. Jesus has authority to calm the storm. Boy, I, I like being reminded of that. Jesus has the authority to calm this storm. He, he got up and, and, I, and, I, and just said, hush. <laughs> what a great word. Hush. Other translations, peace, be still. And his word was enough. He has the authority to calm the storm. You say, well, why doesn't he do it? Well, how about this? Thinking about this, why doesn't Jesus just end this coronavirus? Why doesn't he just eradicate it? That's what I've been praying. I prayed it again this morning. Lord, would you eradicate this from our planet? I've been praying it often, often, often. 
ponder on this for a second. Maybe Jesus wants to calm the storm in your own heart and mine before he does something else. Maybe there's a storm raging in you. It's a storm of fear. It's a storm of what if. It's a storm of I don't know the future. It's a storm of finances. It's a storm of relational stress. Talking to a lot of people, hearing this over and over again, it seemed, I, I don't know how true this is. This is, you know, these are just what I'm hearing, seeing. Maybe you, you are too. I don't know. But it seems that last week, a lot of people hit the wall. A lot of people hit the wall last week. When is this going to end? I can't take any more. Well, let's be reminded that he has the authority to calm the storm. And sometimes before he does anything on the external, he wants to do something on the internal. And then lastly, let's be reminded that Jesus reveals more of himself to his followers through the storm. Jesus reveals more of himself to his followers through the storm. We see that by their... Um, what, what the disciples say at the end. Who then is this? Well, we thought we knew who he was, but now he said, hush, peace, be still. And the sea, the, really in the original languages you read, the sea became like glass. You, you've seen the lagoons around here, the lakes, the ponds, even the ocean sometimes. It gets so still and they really become like glass. That's, that's how it became after Jesus said those words. And then the disciples, who were, afraid, who were afraid and frightened to death by that storm, they were even, uh, the, the, uh, Mark tells us, they were even more afraid. <laughs> who is this? We thought we knew who he was, but good night. We had no idea. And in his miracles, in his actions, in what he did in response to their fear, Jesus revealed more of himself to them. And Jesus desires, I think, to do that with us through all of this time right now. I just wanted to be reminded of that today myself. I wanted to remind you of that today. I hope maybe it will give you some more fuel in your spiritual tank and help you make it through another couple of days, another couple of weeks. Hey, as I sign off with you today, may I ask a favor of you? If you are a part of Low Country Community Church, we're going to talk a little bit about Sunday and give you an opportunity on Sunday during the services. We're going to ask you to complete a three-minute survey for us. As things slowly begin to reopen, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we put a task force together here at church to address the reopening of Low Country Community Church and what that is going to look like. I want to ask you to take the survey, and then I also want to ask you to pray for us because we, we have the responsibility here for thousands of people, and we just can't throw the doors open and say, hey, y'all come, let's just come on back. It, it would be just a terrible thing for us to do. We can't do that yet. We want to walk in faith. We want to trust God. And yet we also need to balance that uh, at, at some level with what we know, um, with, with being prudent and being wise and having God's wisdom in all of this. And so that what we do, we need to, well, first of all, we need to know what to do and we need to know when to do it. We need to know how to do it. So that's first of all, second of all, and third of all, I guess. But would you pray for us that we would know the mind of God in this? We want to protect you, and we want to protect our children, and we want to be very careful and, and uh, very exhaustive in how we do that. No one wants us to get back to pre-COVID more than me. Who knows when that's going to be? And who knows, you know, how, how long this is all going to last? So... We, we've got some decisions to make, and they're not going to be easy decisions, and they're not going to make everybody 
do the Snoopy dance. Not everybody, I'm sure, will be thrilled. But we need to hear your heart. We need to know your mind. And so we're going to uh, share with you this coming Sunday on Mother's Day, and I'll, I'll do that, and our host of the service will also do that, just very briefly during the service, um, how, how to take that survey. And again, that would mean the world to me personally as your pastor, and uh, we really want to hear from you because this is your church, our church, <clears throat> You don't want to be dictated to. We don't want to be dictating people. We want to hear and get, get the mind and the heart of God's people right now. And that will help, I believe, I really do believe that will help us. And God will use what you share with us to help us make the right decision. So look forward to, um, to hearing from you on that. So I hope you'll join us Sunday, 8.30, 10, 11.30. Uh, I found it interesting today. Do you know what service has become the most popular service, the most attended service online? It's the 8.30 service. It's not that way in when we're here in real life, but it sure is online. But whatever time you join us, or if it's some other time during the week, throughout the week, I'm, I'm so glad that you have joined us and continue to do so. And um, we love worshiping with you, of course, but... Uh, Boy, we, we long for the day, as I'm sure you do, when we can gather together once again in our, on our campus here at, at the church. Well, till then, God bless you. Moms, if I don't see you this weekend, uh, happy Mother's Day. We love you. We appreciate you very, very much. And uh, hey, thanks for spending uh, these minutes with me. God bless you and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.